Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for tuning in uh, to this broadcast uh, today. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new series um, called Pace Setters. Pace Setters. Uh, we are going to be journeying through First Thessalonians, uh, just a, a great book uh, in the New Testament. Uh, we are going to discover how we can live our lives uh, as an example for others to follow. Uh, we're going to discover also how we as a church can be an example in our day um, of the, the, what living um, for Jesus Christ is uh, today. Uh, the Cambridge Dictionary uh, says about a pace setter, this is what it says. Uh, a person or organisation that is first to do new or different things and so become an example for others to follow. Uh, let me read that again. Uh, a pace setter, an organisation or a person that is the first to do new or different things and so become an example for others to follow. Uh, pace setters set the pace. Uh, they are an example uh, for others to follow. Uh, I believe there is a call upon us as individuals, uh, there is a call upon the church to be pace setters today in our world, in our communities, in our city. Um, it's going to take, uh, I believe, courage. Uh, it's going to take resilience and it's going to take commitment. And my question today is, are you a pace setter? Is there a desire in you for more? Is there a desire in you to become a pace setter? Uh, I am praying that by the end of this series uh, that something in you stirs, that you desire, that you set out to become a pace setter, to be that example for others to follow. Uh, pace setters aren't afraid to step out. They aren't afraid to step out and do things different. They aren't afraid to step out uh, and even fail because pace setters will get back up uh, and get back in the race. Um, we all fail at times, um, but pace setters, as I said, uh, get back in that race and continue uh, and try uh, something new, something else. Uh, let's read uh, the book of, or the first chapter um, of 1 Thessalonians. Here is what it says. Uh, this letter is from Paul, Silas and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica, to you who belong to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God give you grace and peace. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope that you have because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and he has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know of our concern for you from the way that we lived when we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. And as a result, you have become an example you have become an example to all believers in Greece, throughout Macedonia and Achaia. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking 
about the wonderful welcome that you gave us and how you turned from idols to serve the living and true God. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Uh, if you want to see how the, the, the Thessalonian church started, uh, you can read that in Acts chapter 17. Uh, this is two of Paul's earlier letters. Um, it didn't take long uh, to set up this church. Uh, and God's power was effective in changing lives. God's power was effective in changing lives. Uh, the themes uh, that you will see through this book of First Thessalonians is living holy lives, uh, avoiding sexual immorality. Uh, in the times that this church was birthed, there was uh, sexual immorality all over uh, the cities. Um, and Paul is calling them to live a holy life. Uh, the other themes are Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back suddenly and he is coming back unexpectedly. Um, the believers there were worried um, that the, those, those loved ones who had died, those believers who had died um, before Jesus coming back, what was going to happen to them? Um, and Paul assures them that they will be uh, there, raised from the dead when Jesus comes back uh, again. Uh, also, Paul is encouraging them how to live as a community of believers. So in this book of First Thessalonians, there is so much that we, as the church, can learn and discover for our lives. Uh, the church at Thessalonica was a pace-setting church. Uh, it was a church that broke out of the constraints of its culture, uh, of its geography, uh, of its background, um, it had an influence in its world. Uh, the Thessalonians maintained the pace, even despite the challenges and the troubles that they faced. They kept uh, the pace. Do you know, they learned how to navigate the different seasons in their life. Uh, and I believe that pace setters um, learn how to navigate uh, the seasons of life that they face. Uh, the challenge for us, the challenge for you and I as pace setters, as believers, is maintaining the pace despite the hardship and the troubles uh, that we face in life. Many people, sad to say, just give up. Uh, they walk away. Um, and uh, pace setters, um, which I believe this world needs, are men and women um, who keep going, who keep going despite the, the trouble that they face. Um, also, the, 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 the encouragement and the challenge for us is to understand um, just the, the seasons of life that we face. Uh, we face times of blessing. Uh, we face times of hardship. But they are seasons of life. And seasons come uh, and seasons go. Um, and so pace setters understand uh, the seasons of life. Uh, if you were to uh, summarize uh, 1 Thessalonians, one uh, theologian says this is how he would summarize 1 Thessalonians. Keep going and keep doing what you are doing. Keep going. Well done. You're doing well. Um, and so Paul's message uh, to the church in Thessalonians was keep going. Keep doing what you are doing. Do you know Paul had to leave uh, after a short time when this church was birthed. Um, and he wondered um, and he worried about how the church was doing uh, despite the persecution. And when he sent Timothy just to check it out, um, to see how they were doing, um, Timothy's report was they're doing well. They are keep going in the faith, uh, which pleased Paul. 
Um, and I want to say, uh, keep going. Keep going. Uh, you may feel in your life that you are at a place where you just want to give up. But keep going. Keep going. This church is an incredible example uh, for us today. Uh, and I believe there are many lessons, as I said, that we can learn uh, from this uh, church. Uh, Paul uh, is very quick to point out what a great example this church is to those around them. This is what it says in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. You have become an example to all believers in Greece, throughout both Macedonia and Achaia, and now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it. Do you know, their faith in God didn't just make an impact locally, but it was widespread. Everywhere that Paul uh, went, people were talking about this church. This church had a troubled beginning. Uh, this church were experiencing uh, persecution. The religious leaders were unhappy um, at just how this church uh, was growing about the, the success of Paul's ministry. Um, and so they were stirring up trouble. Um, but despite the hostility that they faced, this church flourished. This church flourished. Uh, so what was the secret? What was it that this church knew? What was it that this church did uh, to be uh, that influence, to be that witness, to be that example to others? Well, they had the right foundation. They had the right foundation. Uh, foundations are vital for any building work. Uh, I'm sure you will agree. Any building work uh, that's going to be going on, any buildings that are going to be built, has to have the right foundations. Um, and if we are going to see the church uh, grow and be built up, if we are going to build our lives in God, then we need the right foundation. This church was birthed in God's power. It says in verse 5, For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. God was at work through Paul and Silas as they preached the gospel. And he was at work in the lives of the Thessalonians. Uh, his power through the Holy Spirit was at work. Uh, the word of God in Romans, I think it is, it tells us that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. Do you know, changed lives came as a result of the gospel being preached and the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that is an encouragement for us. Do you know, as we share our story, do you know, as we share what God has done in our lives, know this, that the Holy Spirit is working. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there, and he is the one that brings that influence uh, for people to believe that Jesus died on the cross, that Jesus rose again, uh, that in him there is eternal life. So don't underestimate uh, the power of the Holy Spirit that's at work as you just share with your friends and family. Uh, what was the result that was happening uh, here in the life of the Thessalonians? Well, they turned away from idols and they served the true and living God. They served the true and living God. Do you know, there was a turning from and there was a turning to. Um, and you know, that is probably what the Bible calls repentance. A turning from to a turning to. Um, and you know, if we want to see more freedom in our life, it's not just turning our lives away from something, 
but turning our lives to, turning our lives to Jesus Christ. Jesus became the focus for this church. Jesus became first in their lives. That is a challenge, isn't it? Making Jesus first in our lives. Jesus became their hope. Jesus became their hope for the future. Uh, Their future was fixed in their trust and hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, So pay setters, make sure that they have a right foundation. Uh, The second thing uh, that this church uh, had was the right role models. The right role model. It says here in verses 6 and 7, You imitated both us and the Lord, and as a result you have become an example to all the believers in Greece throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. Uh, They had the right role models, and I believe they became the right role models. Uh, I want to just say, in our world today, in the world of the rich and the famous, uh, through the media, through film, television, music, you know, role models are are there, influencing our young people. Uh, Our young people are looking to them um, as role models, I believe our young people are looking for role models. And I want to say there is a lot of not good role models out there. There is a lot of ungodly role models in our our rich and famous and in our media uh, standing up to be that role model to our young people. And we have to pray that our young people, that people will see uh, that that this is not uh, a good way for them to live their lives. And I believe that it is time for us as the church, for men and women of God, to rise up and be the role model for our young people. Um, uh, That they would just see in us just the the love and the compassion, the the character uh, of Jesus Christ. Um, That is what I believe our world uh, needs. Good role models yeah so are you a good role model are you influencing anyone do you know who's influencing you today who is your role model today who are you looking at as a way of learning how to live your life Paul and Silas lived what they preached. And I believe they were the right role models. They were great role models for the people uh, in Thessalonica. Uh, And it is important about who we allow to speak into our life, who we allow to be a role model for us. Um, So my encouragement is don't be conformed uh, just by the, the world and the way Uh, that our culture leads us. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will for you as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. The truth is, paysetters need good role models in our lives and paysetters become good role models for others. Uh, The third uh, and final thing that this church uh, had Uh, was the right values, the right values. They lived to please God and not man. It's why Paul could give thanks for them. Uh, It says right there at the beginning uh, of 1 Thessalonians, uh, we always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. 
As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, They had faith, they had love, they had hope as the values in their life. Their faith produced works, their love produced deeds, and the hope caused them uh, to endure. They persevered, they pressed through despite the hardship they faced. Faith, hope and love. Uh, As you'll see there on the screen, they were faithful, they were loving and they were hopeful. And I believe that paysetters build value into their lives. Uh, I believe we all need that core values in our life that we won't deviate from. Uh, that that is, it becomes and is who we are, uh, our values. This is what we stand for. This is what we are holding on to. And there are three that I would encourage you to start with. To be faithful, to be loving, uh, and to be hopeful. Hopeful. Faith, hope, and love were right there at the heart of the Thessalonian church. And they weren't just ideas, they weren't just principles. It was the core values of this church. And you know, they became role models. They became an example for others to see. Uh, So, uh, my prayer is, my question is, will you be a pace setter today in this time Uh, I'm going to pray a prayer of declaration uh, and I encourage you um, just to 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 read it, to think about it um, to to listen to say it um, as it's on the screen um, and just uh, make that your commitment Uh, here is uh, the declaration Uh, thank you Father that you have called me to be a pace setter for your kingdom. Father, may I experience your power and your calling afresh today. May your power enable me to live a life that pleases you. I resolve today that I will keep Jesus first in my life and not allow any idol in any shape or form to steal his place in my heart. Thank you for the leaders that you have given me who lead me by example. Help me to live my life in a way that will be an example for others to follow. Thank you for the church. Help us be the church that will be an example in showing love and showing faith and hope to others. May our lives May our church be the pace setters that bring glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, And so I just want to thank you uh, for uh, listening. I want to uh, thank you uh, for, yeah, praying that prayer. Um, And I do hope and pray that you have been stirred and that you will uh, stand up, that you will step out and become the pace setter that God is calling you to be. Uh, Be blessed uh, this week um, and always remember that you are blessed to be a blessing. God bless. (laughs) 